Good morning. I am so excited to be here and to be beginning this conference on collaboration. Um, I love what we got to hear about this morning about uh, the gamification of education, if you will. Um, I think there's some really interesting things going on in there, and they affect my space tremendously. As Kevin mentioned, I am the department head for business and entrepreneurship here at CCAD. I teach a class called Money Matters for Artists and Designers, which is fantastic, believe it or not. And I love building business curriculum into the art and design experience for our students. I am a CPA by trade, uh, but I have spent most of my career um, working to enhance the financial and business literacy among artists and arts organizations. And uh, as such, I'm pretty sure I am the luckiest CPA anywhere in the entire world. I also happen to love the SNAP secondary analysis. Whoops, sorry about that. I loved the SNAP secondary analysis that came out a couple of years ago uh, because it put data around some of the things I and others had been saying for years, which was that we were observing that working artists and designers were struggling with basic business and financial literacy, and they realized three or four years out of school how important those topics really were. And as we all know from reading SNAP, many of those things were codified and quantified in the SNAP findings, in addition to finding that our students and our alums were generally very satisfied with their educational experience they just felt there was room for improvement in this business area. And that's very exciting for me because I have spent most of my professional working world doing exactly that. And I really believe in it at a very fundamental level. But as we also know, finding a shortcoming is a lot easier than finding a solution sometimes. We at CCAD have dreamed up some pretty radical ways to improve the business literacy of our students, and we'll tell you about those as we continue in my 10 minutes today. Um, but it isn't enough to just offer basic business courses to our students. We need to be doing more. Um, we have to develop technically accurate and robust, relevant information to share with our students. We can't simply import a business program from a neighboring institution and expect it to serve the needs of the young artists and designers that we're trying to serve. So we're doing amazing things, and we'll keep telling you about those in a little bit. Um, but so are the rest of you. We spent some time culling the business and professional practice course offerings that you have posted via ACAD and in other places, and we saw some common themes. Most of us are covering management really well. Um, management is this delightful way of articulating all those things we should probably be doing better, whether we're talking about design management or studio management or time management. Management is this sort of broad catch-all that covers all of these different topics. And we're covering that really well in our professional practice classes. We're also covering professionalism. We're helping our students build their materials, their artist statements, their CVs, their websites, their bios, all of those things that they are armed with as they leave our doors and enter the work world. We're doing pretty well helping them manage promotion, uh, their self-promotion, their branding, their web presence, their social media presence, all of those things that an entrepreneurial creative person needs to manage well. And we're doing a really good job explaining uh, the context that their work is going to be entering, right? Understanding the industry and the environment of art and design right now. But there are a lot of things we're not doing so well. They're showing up sort of in passing, uh, but I would love for a lot of these words to be uh, less gray and bigger. I'd like to be spending more time talking about financial literacy and budgets and grants. Um, intellectual property is a huge issue that our students are encountering as students and as working artists. Uh, they need some help writing and communicating, as we all know. Um, there's a lot of room to talk more about insurance and ethics and taxes, uh, perhaps paying less in taxes instead of just talking about taxes more generally. So I think there's a lot of room for or improvement there. We all have this shared goal, helping to gather these things into a coherent way of building business, financial, legal literacy among our students. We want to build an empowered generation of artists and designers that are capable of pursuing whatever paths they might choose. We don't know what they might be. They could be anything, but we know they're going to need to be nimble. They're going to need to understand how to use the skills in a continually changing environment. We all have this shared goal, but I think we could be doing more together in the spirit of collaboration. And that's where this idea of plus B comes in. 
Plus B for us means this idea of incorporating the business experience into CCAD and into the ACAD member experience overall. We believe there's room to incorporate it without sacrificing the incredible artistic and design skills our students are receiving at all of our institutions. Business schools are not why, or business classes are not why students choose to go to ACAD member schools. They choose to go to ACAD schools or to pursue careers in the arts for reasons that have nothing to do with business, and we know that. But we believe these business skills can really complement what the students are doing in their studios and what they will continue to do as their careers unfold. And we kind of think this idea of collaboration is interesting to serve our students, uh, to share credit among schools, to offer a more seamless transition of business credit, and to leverage some of our limited resources in bringing in uh, guest artists and developing business curriculum. And we think there's a way to do that using this plus B idea. What we envision is a tiered pedagogical program where ACAD member schools have shared access to a couple of things. And first among them would be guest presentations by visiting artists. Um, we're doing some of these things. Uh, here is an image from this stage a couple of weeks ago of Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky. They are a collaborative team uh, with Image Comics behind Sex Criminals, and it's incredibly popular with our students. And we brought them here as part of a series called Crafting Your Hustle, where we bring in incredibly successful visual artists and other artists to talk about the business side of their craft and our students loved it. They were asking questions about how Matt and Chip collaborate. How do they share profits? How does it work when one lives in Portland and the other lives in Toronto? Uh, do they have contracts even though they're really good friends? Uh, how do they navigate all those nuances of being a working artist with a professional practice and also the professional side of that artist piece as well? Uh, we're um, helping them with uh, branding and all sorts of other things as well. Uh, and some of those topics came up uh, with these particular visiting artists and it was a fantastic panel and I would love to be able to simulcast these types of guest presentations across to all ACAD member schools. I'd love to be able to have students asking questions not from microphones in front of the guests but via Twitter or other social media so that all of our students and faculty and alumni by the way could participate in this ongoing conversation in a real collaborative community based way. I also think there's an opportunity to collaborate with our resources. This is an example of an online Excel course we have built. It's about a two hour workshop um, and it works really well in an online capacity because none of us want to spend our valuable studio or classroom time helping our students master Excel. But if as part of their first year curriculum, they could spend a couple of hours on their own time figuring out how to use Excel to apply for a grant or to track their contacts or to better manage their time or their deadlines within the studio. We think there's a really interesting way to take some of the resources we at CCAD and other of our peers elsewhere have built and share them in a subscription-based model so that instructors from other ACAD member schools could find this resource and figure out how it might be incorporated into existing classes at your universities. We understand everyone is on different schedules. Some follow a trimester or a quarter system. Some follow a semester system. Some have condensed summer schedules. If we have these small module-based courses that can be incorporated into the existing courses you're already offering in a relevant way. We're empowering your faculty to take the expertise of others and the resources that have been developed to build these skills that we all value among our students and then enhance the quality of those by sharing some of these resources. Now I mentioned this happened to be a two hour workshop or so. You'll see there's a series of steps. Um, there are some three or four minute videos for the students to watch. There's some expert tips on working in Excel in this particular example. Uh, there's also a workbook to download for the student to complete the tasks on his or her own time and then submit it back to the instructor for review. It's a pretty robust interactive online learning system where the instructor can engage 
engage with the students and the students can engage with each other to share some of their resources. But we could pull out all of these different pieces as well. Perhaps you don't have two hours to have your students spend working on this particular workshop, but perhaps there's a 15 minute chunk of class and there's one element of this that might be very relevant for you. Perhaps you just pull out the video and show it to your students and allow them to play around with this tool at their leisure or you incorporate it into an assignment. We think there are interesting ways to share different components of these um, resources we've been developing so that all of us can incorporate them into our classes in a very relevant and meaningful way. But we don't have to incorporate them in just business classes. The Excel class might work really well for a first year student or a fourth year student who just needs a quick two hour Excel tutorial, but there are lots of other ways to share these resources as well. Uh, these are images from the CCAD fashion show this past spring. Um, it's a big deal here. It's kind of fantastic. I'd encourage you to all come back for it if you're going to be around uh, next May. Uh, and one of the things we did this year in leading up to the workshop was uh, I spent three hours with 22 of the students who were participating in the show and we uh, talked about the price of their garments. The students had already created the garments. They were almost ready to walk down the runway. They looked pretty close to that. And I asked them one at a time, how would you price that garment? What does that cost? What if I'm a buyer that wants to buy that gorgeous dress and I come up to you after the show and I say, oh, could I have that dress? How much is it? What are you going to say? So they panicked briefly and then they quoted some prices. We wrote them all down and then I did a bit of lecture and we did a bit of workshopping activities where we walked through slowly the different components that go into pricing a garment. We did some role playing to talk about uh, how you would react nicely to someone who knows nothing about the work that has gone into something and says something like, I could buy that at H&M for $15. What do you mean it's going to be $2,000, right? So this idea of engaging with the client and explaining the rationale behind a price rather than simply lowering it at the first challenge was a very empowering idea for our students. By the end of the workshop, I asked them how much the garments were after learning what they had learned, and there was an 84.3% increase in the prices they quoted. That is a fantastic return for three hours. Even non-accountants know how good that is. This is very exciting, and there is no reason why those lecture materials, the exercise, the workshop couldn't be shared in this ACAD accessible member database for schools who wish to subscribe to that so that any fashion instructor could do a similar workshop with his or her students and any other instructor could take those same ideas and incorporate the pricing workshop using the foundation of what we've built. We think that's really exciting. But sharing the resources isn't enough. Um, we also aim to build a community around these resources. I suspect there is someone like me at your schools that's wandering around talking about the importance of business education and he or she is probably not getting much attention except at a handful of schools where this is really thriving. What if all of us got together and shared all of these resources? What if we shared feedback about how they were working with the students and the student feedback and things students continue to struggle with or a new intellectual property issue that has recently come up? How can we incorporate that into a new intellectual property lesson and update the materials so that they remain technically accurate? This idea of building a community around these materials will make them useful for everyone and keep the system flexible and nimble enough so that we can all continue to use it. I'm cognizant of my time here. 10 minutes went insanely fast, so I want to end with a call to action. Uh, there is so much more that we have envisioned and laid out as part of this idea of plus B. What does the subscription model look like? How are the instructors who are contributing resources compensated for their intellectual property? What else can we be doing next? I'd encourage you, if you are one of those people who are interested in participating or sharing these workshops, or if you know someone at your schools who is, um, your call to action is to find me. I'll be here the whole conference. Find me, come talk, find Deborah. Find Kevin. You'll see our faces everywhere. This idea of building a handful of interested parties around this idea to build out this resource that could be used for our existing students in the classrooms as they are now and for our alumni in an online learning model is a really powerful idea and I think it's a wonderful way to continue serving our students and our faculty and our staff and our industry in a really compelling way. Thank you.